Alright guys, welcome back. Part number 7 and a final part of my build series of this guy, which is a Hobby Boss 48 scale Persian Cat. Alright, so on the home stretch here, last few jobs to finish up and we're going to be done with his aircraft. Now, still a lot to do. Um, all those little jobs we always have to do at the end and uh, let me catch up to speed what I've, what I've done since the last video fuel tanks built these up painted them up and weathered same way as the rest of the aircraft look at the oil same color and all that kind of stuff I think they're too crazy didn't use different shades like I have done in the past it's just 48 scale um, such a simple starship filth um, these ones go no problem at all I didn't follow the instructions as always being a man I guess I don't read the instructions and I should have done because I painted them gray and um, like the underside of the aircraft and they actually should be white so I as I painted them gray I didn't want to kind of do a ton of white I just did like a light misting coat kind of patchy coat of white on top to get that kind of grimy look and not so it's not bright white so it kind of blends in a little bit so I've done the fuel tanks um, they're ready to go on what else here um, painted all the gear doors inside and out and as you see me done before on my builds I always like to do these on the sprue just because you got the numbers right there and it makes it a little bit easier don't let what's left some rights and that kind of stuff um, this one does have quite a few different doors on this and over different sprues some of these some of the basic well, some of the uh, some aircraft are quite, quite basic ones where you know just a couple of doors which are easy to figure out and you cut them off and paint them separately but here I just find it easy attached spray it um, you know exactly where they go and then just snip them off and attach them super them straight to the aircraft as you need them um, once the gears on so painted up all the gear doors and lastly I've done all the gear so I've not kind of shared that with you guys because it's not really too much to see um, so gears all done painted and um, assembled painted and not weathered because we'll do a wash once it's on the aircraft with the whole bay at once to save time so there we go so two main gear and nose gear um, rubber wheels which I don't mind at all come with the kit and um, it was a challenge to put these together I'm not gonna lie the first one took Main, first main gear probably took an hour to figure it all out because the instructions are a little bit vague um, and showing where stuff's going. I think a couple of these things I probably put in the wrong spot, but hey ho. Um, so yeah, a little bit tricky to put together. So usual thing, put put them together, painted them, um, sorry, primed them black, and then came white afterwards because the black gives a nice kind of heavy look to the white, and then just hand painted the the um the silver parts, the shocks kind of on there. Um, so main gear is done and nose gear same way, um, pretty much. And that's what we've got going on. So I think the next step really is kind of glue the gear on, get all the gear doors on, and just bring all this thing together. Um, still going to do the engine nozzles and a few other little parts as well. We've got all the pitot tubes to do. Um, I also broke off the... Early on the build, I broke off the, the fuel probes. So that's got to be... Um, refueling probes. That's got to be painted up and reattached and that kind of stuff as well. But yeah, moving along nicely. See, see, so, so you can see I've done quite a lot since we last... Um, the weathering on the main aircraft and but we still got plenty of stuff left to do so yeah i'm get going and we're back in um, a couple of seconds showing my latest update okay so as you can see we got her on her legs and a few things to talk about here so firstly this is the first aircraft i built probably in four or five months and that's because you know moving house and stuff pretty much so Getting back on the swing of things, and I didn't put any nose weight in. So I always put nose weight in, no matter what it says, just to kind of safety and just add a little bit of weight to the aircraft. This this instruction said no nose weight. Well, I didn't mention it at all. I didn't put any in. I totally forgot. And um, we're standing up okay, but just a little weight, it just tilt back quite easily. So we are in equilibrium pretty nicely with the wings back. Um, if you forget, like me, I don't think you have any issues. It's, it's, you know, it's sitting on the wheels okay, but just that few grams in the front, you know, maybe a quarter of an ounce or so, will make all the difference. Um, just to you know, make sure it's a little bit weight in the front. We do have the two Hawk missiles to add on the center here, which shouldn't, as in the center, shouldn't really affect the um, equilibrium much, but we shall see, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so we're obviously canopy to go on and stuff, but it's a um, slight touch. It does tilt back quite easily, um, but again, it is sitting um so fingers crossed once we've got it all finished it will stay in this position a neutral position so no sweet um secondly some issues underneath here and we've got the gear on so let's kind of talk about this a little bit so nose gear 
couple of pins on each side. It, instructions tells you to build this early on. There's no way you can build this del delicate little piece here and then handle, weather it, paint it, assemble it, and keep, you know, build. You need to add it last like I did. So you just need to cut those couple of pins off on the side um, so it fits in. And with healthy dose of super glue, you should be no problem. This aircraft, you know, isn't massively heavy. It's not 30 second scale. It's pretty light. Um, so you don't have to worry too much with that. Same in the main gear. Um, pins that go in the side. Um, you're supposed to, again, assemble this early on. There's so many little tricky pieces on here. There is no way you're going to put this on early on the build following the instructions. You want to add it to the end like I did. Again, cup, 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 cut a pin or two off. Um, and um, the actual hole this fits in isn't even the right shape or size. So I had to kind of just trim off a little bit to get the fit with a help of a piece of super glue. Again, we got it in. And even just look at the scheme here down the side, like along here, if you glue this at the beginning, like how are you supposed to paint behind this? It'd be a real nightmare. So you have to definitely add this at the end, um, like I did. Um, you just have to, you know, cut a couple of pieces off and um, try to get it to fit the best you can. So a bit of a design flaw there with Hobby Boss. Um, again, another point for Tamiya with the hair one, but this one, yeah, wasn't the greatest. Now, fuel tanks on the pylons. Um, again, the issue there was the, the pylons, the pins didn't match up with the holes in the fuel tanks. So I thought, oh crap, maybe I'll put them on back, back to front. So I checked the instructions and verified, and nope, I did actually put them on correctly. But um, they just don't line up, whatever reason. So um, basically, what we have to do is cut the pins off, cut a couple of pins off the um, the pylons, and just run a bead of super glue and just stuck these on the best I could, um, which is probably the best you can do too. Because again, unless I'm missing something here, which I'm not, these guys go straight onto the pylons, and if you can look back at the pylons. You can kind of see the shape square at the front and kind of kind of go down at the back um so if you follow that and put them on that way around they're not going to fit the pins they seem to go around the other way to be honest with you um but not a big deal um pretty minor stuff right just cutting pins off you're not going to see this stuff anyway and it does look okay um you see from the side view here it does seem to fit okay um, but that's kind of where we're at. So it's going to give you a little update of some little issues and snags I'm getting along here on the way. But we're taking care of it all, um, moving along. I think the next step is get all these gear doors on, get the um, Hawk missiles on. And these were a little bit of a nightmare too. The, the fins here, I painted separately. I went with the, the bright scheme. You can do them all white, I think, or gray, or with the red fins. I Whenever I do ordnance, I always like to do the brighter schemes. It just really makes the aircraft pop as you know, visual appeal and that kind of stuff so these fins are separate and i painted them separately obviously to make it easier but there's really little or no attachment points to, for these to go the fins to go on um there's some slight grooves but the fit is you know a little vague and to get these straight was a challenge and stay on so again super glue one at a time taking my time but you know i got a few little fingerprints on here and stuff and that was a pretty much a nightmare to get those on um, to be honest with you, it's I definitely appreciate, you know, Great War Hobbies and you know, nowadays you get one piece missiles, um, certainly makes a huge difference because yeah, this was a tricky bit as well. Do have some decals to go on, um, and then I'll clear coat this because this is paint is kind of glossy, so I'll clear coat it um, matte to kind of die it all down once I have those decals on, and then these will just sit on, um, this goes on the other side. So one of the last things we do will be, this will fit on right here. Say to my hand, but right there. And looking at this right now, it doesn't look. We have round holes, and we have um, square pegs. <laughs> so this might be another case of cutting these pins off and then just slapping on with some super glue. I'm guessing. Um, hmm. Right. So there we go. So let me go ahead and work on all the gear doors and stuff, and carry on going. And um, so got fuel probe to paint as well. Right. So we're done. Since last little clip. Added the clear parts, all the pitot tubes, uh, angle attack sensors, all that kind of stuff, all the little parts at the very end. And um, she turned out really good. So I'm going to do a little video um, clip insert here to show you rather than kind of hold up to the camera because this thing is very fragile. Um, it's really hard to kind of hold. And top tip, if you're going to move this thing around, hold two fingers at the radio and a couple of things at the back here. And this 
the best way to move this guy around, I think, without snapping stuff off. If you try to grab the side, you're just going to knock off pylons and gear doors, that kind of stuff. So I had a bit of an accident a week or two ago. I have a giant oak tree in my backyard. Well, I did have a giant oak tree in my backyard, which is good, probably 80 feet high, I'd say. Math's really high, but kind of dead. Um, one of the big tree limbs fell and knocked out my power cable to my house. So I heard a, hurt bang, heard, heard a big bang, looked out the window, and fortunately I was working from home, and saw um, my main life cable, power, electricity cable, to the house about dangling over my deck and about two or three foot off the ground. So I called the um, power company, and within 30 minutes they had somebody here and they started fixing it. Um, so I had to cut this, basically I had to cut this tree down because I didn't want it to fall in the house or damn neighbor's house or anything like that. So $1,800 later, had this giant tree cut down, and my yard is basically full of like a couple of sections of me because I wanted more money to take the thing away and keep it. So I thought, well, rather than just paying them to take the wood away, I'll just put an Adam Craigslist or Facebook and it's, I'll just sell like really cheaply, sell like bundles of wood and at least get some cash back. So right, rather than paying somebody, I'll gain money. So, I mean, we're going over a long detour story here away from the F14, but trust me, I, where we're we going with this. So had all this wood cut down and um, they left the you know sections of stumps and stuff which are really heavy and well, I, normally i take photographs of this i normally take it outside you know and you know somewhere and take pictures i thought well the perfect spot might be on top of the top of these tree stumps because you're surrounded by nice trees it's a beautiful day yesterday you know a full day 76 degrees outside so in the evening sun i took it out put it on the top of this tree stump and it actually turned out to a really good photo base so i might keep it around so that's where the story was going there um thank you for staying with me on that one so Took it out and I put a video up now. You'll see um, in all its glory in the daylight. Um, it turned out really good. A um, few little niggles along the way. Now I will say up front, if I was going to build a 48 scale Tomcat all day long, it would be the Tamiya one. It's just a fantastic kit um, experience. It's just falls together. Out of the box, you get the mast set, canopy mast set. And you're probably, gonna, by the time I bought the mast set for this, you're probably only looking like um, 10, 15, $20 higher. And just for the, sheer delight in the plastic i'd get a tamir every time but we got this one together um and yeah so we got assembled it paint, painted it with mr hobby this time around mr hobby lacquers um a couple of colors were the aqueous lines i didn't have the lacquer equivalent but went down beautifully as you see the paint um thin 50 50 with leveling thinner um or rapid thinner i don't remember which one but some kind of lacquer thinner um sprayed down beautifully and then weathered as always with dark dirt wash and then I came back and added some um, neat oils to add a more complexity to the color. So I just used one color, Starship Filth. So out of the box, other than the canopy mask, which didn't fit. So don't fly 11X, again, failed me. Um, the products don't fit, um, the vinyl products. So that didn't work out. But again, I used Aero Masks by um, Jim Sorensen, and that worked out beautifully, um, as always. Very good product, great service, it ships them out fast, um, vinyl masks, and no bleed or anything, as you can see here. It worked absolutely fantastically. Um, well, it was marked for the Tamiya kit, um, the package, but I figured, hey, dimensions would be pretty much similar and it worked fine on this Hobby Boss kit. Um, not that it's a complex pattern, just makes things a little bit easier and I just enjoy for $10. I like using the master, so why not, right? So that's what we did. Um, let's talk about a few little things. If you're going to build this at home, here's, here's my few tips to kind of um, be cognizant of. Number one, nose weight. As always with Hobby Boss Trumpeter, they don't mention anything about nose weight. Um, it's sitting fine, as you can see, but just a little tap and it's going to swing right back. Um, it's right there on the equilibrium. Um, literally a little bit more weight in the back and that thing's going to be a tail sitter. So I haven't built an aircraft in four months because moving house and stuff and a little bit out of the routine. I normally throw nose weight in no matter what. Um, this time around I forgot, but I would definitely add at least a quarter of an ounce, if not more, to the front. Um, just to just to shore it up a little bit because see it's a little just a little bit too balanced my liking a little bit more nose heavy so nose weight gear um this is a failing on this kit badly designed it's designed so you have to build the gear into the, the base the nose and the main base um before you assemble the whole fuselage and assemble the aircraft so that means the whole process of building painting weathering this thing you got some very delicate nose and um main gear struts coming down to contend with and the parts are so tiny so much detail on this you're just going to break them off break parts off and not to mention if you're familiar with the design on f14 the main gear struts go right next to 
the fuselage. There's no way, there's no space in there to put in the masking tape or try and mask camo behind it. It's impossible. So pick what you want to do. But for me, I, I think what I did was fine. I did it at the end. So what, what involved was all the side pins and all the gear I had to cut off and then just basically just the main one, just a little super glue, stick it in with a bunch of super glue, let it dry and we're good. This is 48 scales. It doesn't weigh a ton. It's pretty lightweight. And um, I think it's holding it no problem at all. So definitely, I think gear at the end, but you can prepare for some modifications. The Some of the pins just didn't line up the pylons with these Hawk missiles. They just, um, yeah, they, they, you have to basically, I think if I remember right in the instructions, you have to make your own holes, but they have to be square, they're square pegs. So making a square hole is pretty tricky. So again, cut the tabs off, super glued it in place, roughly, no problem at all. Um, fuel tanks, again, the, the, the pins, um, well, the holes and the pins between the pylon are completely different position. I went back, double checked and triple checked the instructions. I had it the same way as instructions. So unless instructions are wrong, have it backwards. Um, it just doesn't fit the doesn't fit the fuel tank. So again, cut the tab, cut the pins off, super glue it in place. Um, wings, you can. Well, the nice thing about this kit, the wings you can have the flaps down. Um, but you have the flaps down, obviously you need the wings extended and being a Tomcat is a big aircraft, so I want the wings back to display it. So all mine's built in the up configuration, so that's no real um, advantage to me. Um, wings do go backwards and forwards, but they're independent. There's no mechanism like the Tamiya. I believe with Tamiya, I might be wrong, but I think if you move one, the other one moves equally um, as a pair. This one, you just move them um, individually to the position you want. Um, I was really apprehensive about building this for a long time because of the cockpit tub. It just looked, there's no aftermarket for it. And I, I looked online and um, could find any Quinta Studios or um, Edward or no P or anything. Um, well, Edward might have a P set from years and years ago, which is way discontinued. But um, I, I just looked really devoid of detail. I just really put me off doing this kit. But once I got into it, the copy top actually wasn't bad. It's actually nice in detail. The seats are really nice. You get photo etched straps. And um, again, this is completely out of the box. You don't really see too much in the cockpit um, when it's on the shelf. So, you know, it's just a simple paint job in there. And um, yeah, another nice feature on this one is the gun bay. As you see in the early parts, I glued two, two of the panels together and three of the panels I took off. Um, again, you're not really probably going to see this at all. Um, I don't even know why I bothered doing that. But. <laughs> um, yeah, just a simple out of the box job on this one. It didn't go too crazy. Exhaust nozzles, just simply painted, no like heat staining or anything. Um, just didn't think felt the need of doing it on this scale of kit. But yeah, it was a blast. I do love my F14s and this scheme I've been wanting to do for a long time and glad I did it. You can really go to town weathering, you know, weathering this back and making it look, you know, dingy and um, beaten up if that's where you want to go. Because that's how they are. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for sharing this journey with me. Seven parts. Um, and if you did enjoy this one, hopefully I'll see you next time around. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.